Are these decisions state to state underpinned by data, science? What's your interpretation of some of these decisions more recently? Well, there's two basic principles here. One is that the administration of the vaccinations is left up to states to work out firm details about which populations and when these populations will be eligible to line up for the vaccine. So that's the first part that provides a little bit of problem in terms of interpreting things across states. Uh, the second thing is, remember, the first goal of this vaccination campaign was to try to protect those populations that are at risk of the most severe disease. And so that's the elderly, that's healthcare workers who are exposed to the virus more frequently, that's um, uh, people with underlying medical conditions. We're now seeing the vaccine supply projected to increase dramatically over the next few weeks. And so now you're starting to see this the vaccination open up to other groups. But again, the state-to-state -state variation in terms of how they prioritize these groups is what you've sort of seen is causing some confusion um, when you look across the country in terms of how the vaccines are being rolled out. Do you think we're trying to anticipate hesitancy that might be on the horizon? I, I think that's going to be the biggest issue that we have to deal with going forward now. Again, supply looks like it won't be a problem in the next couple of weeks. Um, the goal that President Biden put out of immunizing 200 million Americans implies that a very large percentage of the adult population in the U.S. will accept the vaccine. And some of the polls that I've been seeing, particularly polls that look at um, different socioeconomic groups and different racial groups, don't suggest that the vaccine acceptance rate is that high to reach that 200 million goal. So we may have enough vaccines, but we really have to work hard to make sure that we have people that are lining up to get those vaccines. I want to go back to something you were saying, Andrew, this idea that the key was to get the most vulnerable populations vaccinated. And I wonder at what point that makes COVID-19 like the average flu or like any other disease uh, that people get and it's not a big deal and then they get over it. At what point does the fact that the most vulnerable has been taken care of allow us to reopen and stop social distancing in the same way that we have, even if uh, we haven't reached herd immunity when it comes to vaccinations? So scientifically, we'll be looking at the case numbers and the case fatality rates. If you see the case fatality rates dropping significantly lower than the case numbers, then you'll see that then we can infer that the vaccine is doing that first job, which is protecting the most vulnerable from the most severe disease. And at that point in time, it really then becomes just a, uh, a race to get as many people vaccinated so that we can reduce the number of cases. The case number is going to be important, even if they're mild cases, because that sets up situations where we can have the emergence of some of these variants that might get around some of the immunity that the vaccine uh, get, puts in place. So for the next couple of weeks, we still have to think about public health interventions and vaccinations as a two-pronged strategy to reduce the number of cases. And once we can reduce cases and get significant vaccine into, the, into most of the population, that's when the rollouts become much more feasible. How did the therapeutics that have been established play into this? The idea that Merck and Pfizer both have different pills uh, that they are developing that you could take when you first get the virus that ameliorate some of the symptoms, keep people out of the hospital. Do they add to this push, this allowance to reopen even before we reach uh, that threshold of immunization? Absolutely. Uh, and this brings up that third prong that we, that we could, will hopefully have in place as well. But you mentioned a really important point. These therapeutics that are coming out have to be given early because they target the virus and the virus is oftentimes highest at the early stages. And when people are in their very severe phases of disease, the virus is actually present at lower amounts, it's the person's immune response that's driving that disease severity. So as these therapeutics become available, the messaging of you have to take this early because that's when it's going to help you um, also has to come out.